Hello, this is Jeffrey Hall. Thank you for joining me again for this part two in our series of the Cisco UCS architecture, the Unified Computing System. In our first video, we took a look at the, the various components of the UCS, including the fabric interconnects, the 5108 chassis, the 2104 IOM modules that the blades connect to across the Unified fabric up to the fabric interconnects. And we also took a look at the northbound connections into the LAN and SAN cloud as well. In this lesson, we're going to take a closer look at the chassis themselves, the 5108, and look at how the blades themselves communicate out through the chassis into the uh, unified fabric up to the, up to the fabric interconnects. And then we'll take a closer look at the IOM pinning process as well. So let's get to it. Uh, so we can take a look here. Let's just go ahead and draw a 5108 chassis. So I'm just going to draw it like this. And we'll call this the front. And this will be our back. All right, so we're just taking a top-down look at our 5108. All right, and about two-thirds of the way back, if we were to look at the very top of one of these chassis, we would see that about two-thirds of the way back, there is something called a mid-plane. All right, so I'm just going to draw that here. And this mid-plane connects everything inside the chassis for both power and data. So we'll see that on the front, this is where our blades would be. And these can be either half width or full width blades. On the back, we're going to have our IOM modules. So we'll just put IOM here. We'll draw IOM on the other side as well. Input output modules. These are our Cisco 2104s. And in the middle, we're going to have our fans. All right, so our different fans here. And the, the fans, of course, the power supplies, which we saw in the last video from the front display, blades everything is hot swappable here the mid plane actually is uh, supports full auto discovery of the components as you plug it back in we're going to see that the the blades themselves are going to connect to a little connector on the back of the chassis here and i'm just going to draw it in like that and if we were to take a closer look at the connector here we'll see that in fact it's split it's going to have one side looks a little bit more like this and it's going to be for power and the other side, a little bit uh, just it dotted, that is for data, right? So everything is equidistant here out across the midplane uh, for both power and data. You know, we talked about fabric A, we talked about fabric B. You know, there's no rule that says A has to be on the left and B has to be on the right. But when we talk about connectivity for these blades, you know, we also see that the mezzanine card fits on the back here. And the, there are various models of mezzanine cards. You know, we're going to see that uh, the ones that we've been talking about, the M71, M72, KR Menlo cards, as well as the M81, KR Palo card, the VIC M, uh, virtual interface card, they both have two 10 gig Ethernet adapters. And they're also going to have two fiber channel HBAs. And we'll just draw them as green. All right, and talking about these uh, these adapters, they do give the uh, the blades 20 gigs of throughput for Ethernet traffic, and the the uh, HB adapter is 2, 4, or 8 gig auto sensing there for the fabric, so uh, up to 16 gigs of throughput we can see for the fiber channel. And from these, if we're using a VIC M81KR, and let's just go ahead and draw up, and I'll just put over here mezzanine cards. Right, and some of them would be, of course, we talked about the the CNA M seventy one KR, and as well also the Vic M eighty one KR. Right, so with the Vic M eighty one KR, the Palo card, we can create up to fifty eight virtual adapters on these blades, depending on how many IOM ports we have connected. So, looking here, we're going to have also our four IOM connectors. And these go up to our fabric interconnects. All right, so I'll just put a little arrow like that right there, and we'll say to the FIs, right? And we whatever we do on the left hand side, we would do on the right hand side as well. So to the FIs. So the fabric interconnects. And if we have one of the IOM ports connected, we'll be able to create up to 13 adapters. We'll see the uh, formula is actually going to be 15 minus N. 
or times n minus 2. Right? So if we have uh, 15 times 1, that's 15 minus 2 is 13. If we have two of these connected, 15 times 2 is 30, minus 2 is 28. If we have all four connected, then that would be 15 times 4 is 60, minus 2 is 58. Now, taking a brief second to talk about the capacity of these mezzanine cards uh, and the VIC M81KR, its architectural limit is actually 128 adapters, but the software limitation right now is 116 virtual adapters. So you may wonder where we get 58 from that. Well, 116 includes not only the adapters we would create, the VNIX VHPAs, but their implied failover path as well. So we really have to cut that in half, and therefore you have a maximum of 58 total adapters that we can configure right there. All right, so looking at that, we would be able to see that, uh, for example, if I were to configure this one to go to A, and if I want to configure this adapter to go to B, then uh, it's going to be the same distance because the midplane equally connects all blades and all components uh, in the chassis. So whether I'm telling that VNIC to go out, you know, via my service profile out fabric A or fabric B, it doesn't really matter. So whether we have the blades down the left hand side, you know, slots one, three, five, and seven, or down the right hand side, two, four, six, or eight. I can have them go out of either Fabric A or B's IOM port and be equally distant to the LAN and sand clouds. All right, so that is the architecture inside of the chassis itself. And therefore, on the last video, when we saw simply that the blades inserted in the front and there was this cable that came out of the, uh, each side called the unified fabric, which is, you know, this cable here. Now we can see inside the chassis that when we build our VNIX and VHBAs, we can tell them to go out fabric A or fabric B, and via the mid-plane connectors, we're able to connect equidistantly either uh, fabric A and B. And when we talk about our V-NICs, we can configure them to fail over. So primarily maybe going out fabric A, failing over to B, and vice versa. When it comes to the, uh, the fabric VHBAs, and we would say go to fabric A and then go to fabric B this way, we cannot fail over the VHBEs inside the service profile. The multi-path redundancy we would get there is from having connections from both Fabric A's Fabric Interconnect and B into the sand cloud and, and clouds. So that is where we would get our redundancy there. The trick here is the operating system has to be able to handle the multi-pathing itself. All right, so that is the that is a quick look inside of the chassis. Now let's uh, take a closer look at the IOMs themselves. We can see here that we have our ports, uh, four of them, four fabric ports. These are all 10 gig SFP plus style ports. We said earlier that you can have up to 58 total adapters for the VIC M81KR. That's up to. Now you can connect one, two, or four of those connectors, and how you connect them is going to affect the throughput that we have inside the chassis itself. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to draw up an IOM module. So looking at an IOM module here, we'll see that this is, in fact, could be A or B, so I'll just go ahead and say Fabric A, for example. And we're going to have our connectors here on the right-hand side. And these are our, and I'll just put over here, Fabric ports. Right, we will also have, and I'll just go ahead and mark these one, two, three, or four. We will also have eight built-in backplane ports. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll just call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, physically, the fabric ports on the right hand side or the left hand side, we can see those. Those are SFP plus ports. When we look at the the backplane ports on the uh, right hand side, we don't see those. Those are simply built into the IOM, and they are hardwired to the slots of the chassis. So port one of the backplane ports is hardwired into slot one of the chassis, port two into slot two, and so on, and that is hard-coded. We cannot configure that. We cannot change it, and this is how we connect each of the blades in the chassis. So we have the different connectivity options, and I just want to step through these one at a time. So our first connectivity option is to have one IOM port connected. So when we look at our first option, if we have one fabric port connected, it will service 
all eight slots. Right, that is what's called an eight to one oversubscription. All eight blades would make use of the 10 gig fabric uh, port on the left hand side. Now, if we have all, uh, if we have two of these connected, right, that's our next option. We'll see that for uh, port one and port two, they're going to have a little bit of a different uh, load balancing here. For port one, it's going to handle slots one, three, five, and seven, and then port two will handle slots, slots, there we go, two, four, six, and eight. All right, so now we have an, uh, a four to one oversubscription. So that is our second option. If you have two of our fabric interconnects, um, our, our ports to the fabric interconnects uh, plugged in there, then we'll see that slots one, three, five, and seven would go across port number one. Two, four, six, and eight would go across port number two. And this is how we would sort of force a load balance of the traffic across these links. And our final option is to have all four of them connected. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll just uh, call that, uh, this is, option one, this one is option two, and all three of these together is gonna to be option three. All right, and I'll just do that right there for option two. And therefore, option three, I'm sorry, let me erase that real quick because that's not what I was looking to do. So while I'm, uh, er while I'm erasing this, we're going to uh, see that we're gonna have a third option here. All right, so let me just draw that back up there for ports. Okay, our third option will be down here. And therefore, we would have, I'm just, and I'm just going to draw it like this. One, two, three, and four. And for port number one, it will handle slot one. For port number two, it will handle slot two. For port number three, it will pass traffic for slot number three. For port number four, it will handle and pass traffic for slot number four. If we have a fifth blade in the chassis, it will handle for blades uh, five. Slot two will handle for six. Slot three, or port three, will handle for slot number seven. And finally, port number four would pass traffic for blade four and eight. So we can see that, in fact, this is a two to one oversubscription. And just as a reminder, just to, just to bring it all back home, let's draw up in the right-hand corner the placement again for our different slots. And I'm just going to draw this very generically, but we'll see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when you have this blade arrangement in your chassis, now we have a little bit of design discussion here, which, uh, you know, how, how much bandwidth do we need northbound from our chassis into the fabric interconnects? Therefore, how many of the IOM fabric ports do we connect and which blades are going to be pinned across which of the fabric ports here? So we can see that if we have all eight blades connected, that uh, port one and five are going to be routed across port number one. Blade slots two and six would be routed across port number two. Blade slots three and seven would be routed across port number three and blades four and eight would be sent up port number four, the fabric ports. All right, so this has just been a quick look here inside of the chassis, and I wanted to give just a little bit of a more insight as to not only do we see the, uh, the initial diagram we had in the first video, but now looking at the physical signal flow inside of the chassis, how each of the blades, mezzanine carts, VNIX and VHBAs, route up through the IOM ports and in fact, we can see that they would go from the mezzanine port through the mid plane into the IOM's back plane port, out through their relevant fabric port, up the unified fabric to the fabric interconnects, and then that's where they would pin to their uplinks to go either into the land or sand clouds. All right, so this is uh, part two of our video series. In our next video series, the uh, next part of the video series, we're going to look at the uplink pinning process for both the LAN and SAN side. So what we saw here was the, the IOM pinning process, and in the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the uplink pinning process.